As a data engineer, if you think your role is limited to crafting complex select statements, you are in for a surprise. In reality, data engineering goes far beyond that. You will be leveraging procedural languages like stored procedures to execute SQL logic or even utilizing programming languages like Python to implement advanced workflows. You may be using SQL through JDBC connectivity or executing SQL scripts. The role is dynamic and deeply technical. In this video, we'll dive into a crucial design aspect of writing ETL SQL scripts. Before you begin writing, it is essential to understand the structure of a typical SQL script. There are two common approaches to consider and we have outlined both on the slide. Take a moment to review them. If you already spotted the difference between the two, well done. Give yourself a pat on the back. For those who haven't identified the distinction, here is the answer. The first option uses temporary tables, while the second option relies on persistent staging tables. When working with complex SQL queries, especially those that involve multiple stages of data transformations, developers often use either temporary tables or intermediate persistent tables. To store intermediate results. Understanding the difference between these two options is critical for making efficient decisions regarding database design and query performance. In this video, we'll explore the difference between the two, we'll discuss the strengths and potential drawbacks of each approach. Let's examine the first option using temporary tables. Temporary tables are session specific, meaning they are automatically dropped once the session ends. Some key advantages of using temporary tables include no operational overhead. Since the table disappears after the session, there is no need for ongoing maintenance. There is no storage consumption. In most databases, temporary tables utilize user space or memory for storing intermediate data. This avoids the need for physical storage. This is especially beneficial if your database is low on disk space, as temporary tables have minimal impact. Data isolation. Because these tables are session specific, no other users can access or modify the data, even if they create a temporary table with the same name. Last but not the least, temporary tables are quicker to implement. There is no requirement of additional DDL scripts or granting special permissions, making them fast and easy to set up. Let's also consider the disadvantages of temporary table. No data availability after session. Once the session ends, the data is lost. The table is gone. If you need the same data for subsequent scripts, you will have to rerun the original query to regenerate it. Potential performance limitation. In some databases, Temporary tables do not support indexes, statistics collection, or optimization features like analyze, which can result in suboptimal performance, more time consuming for debug. Since both the data and the table are removed after the session, troubleshooting becomes more difficult. You will need to recreate the temporary tables and rerun the script to reproduce the error for debugging purpose.
If you are enjoying this content, don't forget to like the video. And if you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. It really helps and keeps me motivated. Feel free to drop a comment if you have any question. Now let's discuss option 2. Using staging tables in an ETL SQL script. Staging tables are persistent meaning both the data and the table remain available even after the session end. Some advantages include data reuse across scripts and sessions. Subsequent scripts can access the same staging table if needed, saving valuable time and resources that would otherwise be spent retrieving the same data. Staging tables have potential for better performance. Since staging tables are persistent, they support optimization features like indexes, keys, compression and analyze which can significantly improve query performance. Easier to debug. With data retained in the table, you can quickly query the staging tables to diagnose the issues such as missing or even corrupt data after script execution. Resume capability. In the event of a failure, you don't need to rerun the entire script. Simply fix the issue and resume from the point of failure, saving time, especially with long running queries that have already completed successfully. While staging table offers many advantage, they do come with few drawbacks. Let's explore the disadvantages. Operational overhead. Staging tables require ongoing maintenance. In some databases, you may need to run commands like vacuum to reclaim storage space. Additionally, if keys and indexes are not chosen wisely, they can negatively impact query performance rather than improve it. Staging tables require storage space. Since the data is persistent, staging table consumes physical storage, which can be problematic if your database is running low on space. Vulnerability to modifications by other sessions. If another script accesses the same staging table, it may overwrite the data. When jobs run in parallel, this can result in data corruption for both the sessions. Longer implementation time. Creating staging tables require more effort as you will need to write separate DDL scripts and ensure that the proper permissions are granted to the opt. So when should you use temporary table versus staging tables? Opt for staging tables if your pipeline experiences frequent data issues, frequent failures, or you are handling large volume of data or you experience long query execution time. On the other hand, choose temporary tables if you are handling smaller volume of data, running shorter queries with quick execution time. I hope when you understand the advantages and disadvantages of temporary and staging tables, you are equipped to take this decision wisely.